All right, welcome in college football week, uh, what, 12? My word, just a couple more regular season games, then we'll get uh, some conference championships, uh, some bowl discussions, and of course, work our way through the playoff to a national championship. But we continue with our 49 straight days of college football tonight with a little Maction Tuesday, and nobody better to hear to talk about that kind of football than this kind of handicapper, Brian Power in the house, along with the one and only Adam Trigger and Double R One L, Steve Merrill, to bring some big boy football into it. Talking <laughs> Miami, Louisville coming up, but we got to get to the Mac games, guys. I mean, listen, edge is an edge, uh, and these have been fun games to say the very least over the last couple of weeks. There, these Tuesday, Wednesday night games. Uh, and listen, no different than what we got here tonight with Toledo and Bowling Green. Now, I don't know. There was some concern about Bowling Green. I think both their running backs, which is pretty much their entire offense. There was questions as far as whether or not they are going one may or one may not or both go or don't. Uh, but we are seeing the total around what? 10, 10 and a half here against Toledo. So what are we doing here, BP? How are we setting this game up? All right, so Toledo played its probably best game of the year last week. Uh, complete domination against Eastern Michigan. And, you know, calling it their best game of the year is saying something because, Joe, this team is now on a nine-game win streak, very close to entering the AP Top 25. Remember, the Rockets only lost this season, season opener at uh, Illinois. Pardon me. That was decided on a last-second field goal after the Illini converted a fourth down. So, we're talking about a Toledo team that probably feels like it should be undefeated against Eastern Michigan. Uh, just no sweat there. They led 35 to three at the half, ended up with a 503 to 255 edge in total yards. It was a 49 9 game before EMU put two garbage time touchdowns on the board. No problem covering the 19 and a half point spread for Toledo. Finn threw 407 yards, three touchdowns. Boone, the running back, he ran for three scores. Now, the interesting part of this handicap here, guys, is because they won last week, Toledo has already clinched the MAC West. They're almost certainly going to face Miami in the conference championship game that, you know, barring a complete collapse by the Red Hawks in their final two games. So you have to ask yourself just how motivated is Toledo going to be for these final two regular season games? Just last year, it was the exact same situation. They had the division wrapped up with two games to go. And what happened? They lost those last two regular season games. And one of them was to this BG team as a 15-point favorite. This is the I-75 rivalry. Oh, by the way, Joe. And Bowling Green, mm -hmm. no pushover. Uh, they are one of four MAC teams already bowl eligible, along with, obviously, Toledo, Miami, and Ohio. Last week was BG's largest margin of victory all season, 49-19 to over the hideous Kent State Golden Flashes. Uh, you mentioned the running back situation. Stewart was out last week, but in comes the backup, Keith. All he does is 100-plus yards receiving, 100-plus yards rushing. And this is now the first time since 2015 BG has won four consecutive games. I guess you could make the case that Toledo's better than they were last season, and, and I wouldn't argue with that. They've obviously got revenge, not to mention maybe that group of five spot in a New Year's Six Bowl game dangling in front of them. But I just think it's too many points to lay on the road, Joe. Trig and I have talked about it on our weekly Maction breakdowns on the hustle. Under Jason Candle, Toledo typically does drop one game every year as a favorite. Not saying they lose outright here, but too many points. Bowling Green beat Georgia Tech, remember. I would lean towards taking the points in the I-75 rivalry. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's all. I think, what is it? Uh, Tyron Stewart and, and Tyron Keith, the two running backs of Bowling Green, uh, over a thousand yards rushing. If they both go, give me as many points as you want uh, here tonight on a game. Like you said, I don't know, Toledo. Don't know if I trust you laying that many points here in this spot, but there is another game too, where you got a question here, Trig, whether or not we trust the offense and 38 year old Rocky Lombardi, a quarterback in <laughs> uh, whether or not that we think uh, NIU is uh, is worthy of laying a number here against Western Michigan. No, I mean, no kidding. Rocky Lombardi feels like he's been there like 10 years. Uh, I just don't I, I'm really like a ninth year senior. I don't even know what what this is here with him, but he's still playing college football, but it's been a rough couple of weeks for him. So what are we doing this spot tonight? So. Yeah, I mean, listen, this line has moved. It, it, 
in, in a weird way, in my opinion. Um, you know, it looks like there's probably some sharp money on Northern Illinois. So there's there's probably some people out there that think Northern Illinois is, has got a better offensive matchup here and, and is, you know, going to bounce back from their two losses. But I disagree with that. I disagree with the move. And now I think with the, the number being where it is, you're getting some pretty nice value on Western Michigan. So we've talked about Western Michigan on this show the past couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, it was a, a 4% play for me. They, they won easily, blew out Eastern Michigan. Um, last week, they you know didn't make my client card, but it was still a pretty easy win for them over Central. Um, this is no doubt a step up in class for the Broncos, but I think the, the biggest point I want to make here in regards to Western Michigan is this is a team that's, that's really improved as the season's gone on. Remember, Lance Taylor's a first-year coach. This is a guy that only had one year as a coordinator. Um, last year, it was his only year as offensive coordinator, and now he's a head coach uh, at, at the FBS level. So, you know, kind of worked his way up from positional coach, coordinator. Now he's the head coach. And, it, you know, it just it took him some time to get this team playing, um, you know, winning football. But if you go back to the beginning of the season, and I keep going back to the game that they came here and played Syracuse, you know, they had a pretty tough non-conference schedule. Um, you know, Syracuse played easily their most efficient offensive game of the year, put up 500 yards. They could do no wrong on offense in that game. Um, you know, so that was a blowout. And then the next week they had to go play Iowa, who's one of the elite defenses in, in college football this year. Um, and then they played Toledo early in the season, and they actually led that game at halftime by 10, unraveled a little bit, but they still put up 400 yards of total offense. And then a couple of weeks later, they had to play Mississippi State, and they put up 413 in a game that was very even based on the statistics. So, you know, now they're starting to figure out how to win, though, because they had some nice performances. The Miami of Ohio game, uh, they, they hung around and, and fought against a very, very good back team, um, arguably the best, well, probably the best defense in the MAC. Uh, and then Ohio ha- has been one of the better teams in this conference, and, and they really battled, lost that game by three. And now they're figuring out how to get on the right end of those types of games. They blast Eastern Michigan, blast Central Michigan, and I really think that they could hang around here, potentially win this game. Of course, both these teams, they need it. I think both would need this game to, to you know, potentially be bowl eligible. And I just like the way they're coming into this game more so than Northern Illinois, who has now dropped back-to-back games, six turnovers, three in each. They've, they've really played, you know, some, some suspect football on the offensive side. You mentioned Lombardi. Uh, you know, that that's going to be what, is Northern Illinois' undoing most likely here is the turnovers. And Western Michigan has been okay at forcing them. But really the reason I like this West, uh, matchup for Western Michigan is Hayden Wolf and it has been much, much better when he's not under pressure. If you go back and look at his last five games or so, when he's not getting a ton of pressure, he plays very well. When, when teams are able to get after him, that's when he tends to struggle. And Northern Illinois, for as good as they are defensively, this isn't a team that has like an overwhelming pass rush. They're very good at cover, you know, coverage, you know, and and limiting uh, big plays and 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 yardage. They're very good at, but you know, getting in the backfield and making, you know, sacking the quarterback is is not their strong point. And so I actually think Hayden Wolf will play fine here. And when you add all of that up and just the way that Western Michigan has sort of improved from the beginning of the season till now, the fact that they've been able to, to, you know, win these last couple games instead of play well and lose, I think is a good enough reason uh, to take the point. So at the current number, no brainer here, Western Michigan's the value and that's how I would play it. All right. Western Michigan, a little bit of value here uh, tonight, a little matching on a Tuesday. And if you are new to us here, at Wager Talk TV, I'd make the suggestion of going ahead and uh, hitting the subscribe button, become part of the Wager Talk TV family, uh, because if it's top 25, Power 5 conference, head-to-head matchups, you want to learn more about, maybe get a few best bets, that's how you do it. Nobody's got more content than we do all week long, so become part of that Wager Talk TV family and smash that subscribe and like button as we welcome in Steve Double R One L Merrill. You'll see a lot of his videos up and available here at Wager Talk TV. And uh, Merrill, thank goodness uh, you picked the you know the varsity team here. 
Uh, you've got uh, now Louisville, who is – I'm still trying to figure out how the hell they won that game against Virginia – uh, taking on uh, Miami, who I'm fairly certain Trigg is trying out a quarterback now since they don't have anyone <laughs> left. Uh, so what are you doing with this game that was a pick I, I, Who the hell is betting Miami? I have no idea, but that's what we got going on here, Merrill. Yeah, I figure it's time to talk a little Division One football finally on the show today. No, all jokes aside, <laughs> this this should be a pretty good game. Louisville's been a fun team. Uh, a couple weeks ago, guys, you'll remember I used on this show uh, two weeks ago. I used the best bet on one of the episodes on Louisville minus the nine and a half against Virginia Tech. I thought they remained underrated. They smoked Tech thirty four to three. And then last week, I talked about it on the Thursday show. I gave a little preview. Wasn't using the game, but I thought Louisville was the only way to play it. So I was surprised that Louisville barely won as a three touchdown favorite, as you mentioned, Joe. 31-24 against the uh, the Hoos, against the Cavaliers. Now, Virginia has thrown the ball better than people realize this season. Of course, they had that huge upset of North Carolina a few weeks back. And Louisville did give up over 300 passing yards to the Cavaliers. Uh, so we'll see if Miami can get the passing offense going, uh, even with the questions at quarterback. I like Miami in this game. I, if you're going to play it, hold your nose and play it. I'm kind of combining my top 25 video with my fade the public video because Louisville's a top 25 team, and I do think, we're fading the public a bit here with the home dog, Miami. I, I do worry if they have anything left in the tank after the Florida State game last week, that narrow miss by seven. But I think they do play hard still. It's their final home game of the season. And look, I'm not going to say it's a big home game. I checked yesterday, Hard Rock Stadium. You can get tickets for as low as $7 right now. So, Joe, you can afford to bring a friend to this game on Saturday mm. and then have a little leftover for nachos and beer as well. But I still think it's not a great spot for Louisville. Because look at their schedule. They've played three straight home games. And, yes, they had impressive wins against Duke and Virginia Tech, lackluster against Virginia. Last time they traveled was over a month ago, mid-October. And that's when they lost their only game of the season by 17 as a seven-point road favorite against Pitt, who is not as good as Miami. I know that was coming after the Notre Dame game. But even the week, a couple weeks before that, they barely beat NC State on the road 13-10. They've only played two road games since the first second week of September. So I do think this is going to be a difficult trip for him, and it could be a dangerous spot for him. And if you look at the statistics on the season, Miami's played the tougher schedule. Uh, both teams run for 5.1 yards per rush. Uh, Miami actually gives up less yards per rush. And uh, their numbers are pretty comparable overall yards per play, both allowed when you factor in opponents. So I think these are two equal teams. I think the line's been inflated a little bit too much based on recent results. We'll take a shot with the Miami of Florida Hurricanes here as a live dog on Saturday. This might be their bowl game. All right. Well, you know, it's uh, it's funny, uh, Merrill. They are running a special for uh, a flat 10 bucks. You can actually stay and watch that even worse game on Sunday with Miami and the Raiders. So uh, it's a two for one because ain't nobody going to that friggin' game either. Uh, I can assure you of that there. So there you got it. We've got a uh, couple of JV, one varsity game, and now it is best bet time here. And that is right. So that means we're going to head back to Brian Power, who's going to talk about the always popular Coastal Carolina squad here, the uh, the Chanticleers uh, taking on Army. So this should be a barn burner. Army getting four and a half in this one. Is Grayson McCall back? Is he, is he not? Does it matter? They seem to be winning games with or without him. So what are we doing in this spot here, BP? Yeah, we're going to have to check his status. Uh, he obviously has missed the last three games uh, after going down against Arkansas State. Uh, Joe, for the record, this game is on CBS Sports Network at noon Eastern. So uh, throw it on your third TV here, and uh, we'll see if we can Ooh. bring this one home. As someone who uh, may or may not have been a slacker in their early 20s, I think I've got a pretty good feel for when college kids may not be uh, about to give their best effort. And that brings me... Mm. To Coastal Carolina in this game, Joe, as they're going to West Point to face Army, it's not a great spot for the Chanticleers. They're stepping out of the Sun Belt. They've won five in a row straight up and against the spread. Unbeaten James Madison coming to town next week. They may have their eye on that one. And I go back to last bowl season. When you talk about facing these triple option offenses, the the obviously the military schools, the armies, the navies, the air forces, it's <laughs> You know, if, if you're not used to it, it's not fun to defend. And I go back to last bowl season. I talked about Baylor and Air Force when they played. It was two days before Christmas. I said, to my point about knowing when maybe college kids aren't about to give their best effort, that there was no way Baylor was going to try to defend that triple option of Air Force. Mm. Sure enough, they got ran over. And I think Coastal Carolina is going to struggle defensively here. Uh, Army does need to win its last two games to get bowl eligible. 
two weeks ago, they were a very nice winner for yours truly as they shocked Air Force outright as an 18-point underdog. I think I gave that out with you, Joe, on uh, Wager Talk mm-hmm. last call, if memory serves me correct. Uh, now, it was not pretty last week against Holy Cross, only winning by three. That's a bit of a concern, but I expect the cadets to be ready here. It's their final home game of the season. Uh, Steve talked about the importance of that in the handicap, knowing when it's a team's final home game, that leads to added motivation. By the way, going back to my big game breakdown, it's Bowling Green's final home game as well. But, you know, Army's defense has played well, 21 points or less for the last five games allowed. Uh, The one exception was against LSU, where clearly they were outclassed. You mentioned McCall's absence. Obviously, we want to keep that in mind. The way this uh, line is moving, the market must not think he's playing because the numbers come down since the Open. Coastal has not been winning by margin. Beat Old Dominion by four. Texas State only by eight. They gave up a lot of rushing yards in those two games, so that's a cause for concern against Army, obviously. And against Old Dominion, Coastal was down by as many as 15 and trailed in the final minute as well. Remember the new clock rules. I think Army can grind this game down. Won't be many possessions. Army plus four and a half. My best bet for the show. Army plus four and a half against the Chanticleers. And I will just say this. It's got to be the first time in the history of Wager Talk TV (laughs) programming, uh, Trig, that we've gotten... Holy Cross mentioned in more than one show on the same day. I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, The fact that uh, BP even referenced Holy Cross, I would uh, advise folks to head over to the college basketball tip-off show and check out uh, another Holy Cross breakdown and mention there by yours truly there, Adam Trigger. But I'm going to guess, Trigg, we're not talking Holy Cross football here. We're going to go one less uh, and talk about Akron. So I cannot wait to hear this one, too, coming up uh, in a few hours here of taping. But uh, Akron taking on Eastern Michigan. How are you looking at this one? Yeah, big day here on the show for Holy Cross. Shout out to Worcester, Mass, where <laughs> that college is located. Jeez. Great minor league baseball stadium right down the, field, uh, down the street from Holy Cross where the Worcester Red Sox play. Um, but we're going to talk Akron, Eastern Michigan. Here, listen, I, Joe, I, th- I went like in full tantrum mode kind of last week in college football um, where I just basically packed it in. Um, I've had such poor luck in college football the past couple of weeks, and it was a great decision because it wouldn't have gotten better for me. So I'm hoping now I, I feel great about this week. I feel like when you do that, you avoid a couple losses. It tends to come back and, and, and go in your favor the following week. Um, so this hasn't made my client card yet, but this is the best play I have for today. And I do think it ends up winning even at the current number. Listen, I had, I, Akron was one of those best bets last week. They managed to not cover as a 17 and a half point underdog, um, losing the game 19 to nothing, which is just brutal. They, you know, they hold Miami of Ohio to 19 points and they can't cover 17 and a half. Uh, you know, the second week in a row that. I had a team on the goal line to punch in a garbage time score and it did not work. Um, the other thing that's, that's a little bit misleading about that game, in my opinion, um, Akron. So a couple things, one, I mean, they were up against a very good Miami of Ohio defense. I have them rated as the top defense in the Mac this year, even more so than Toledo. And there was a couple of game changing plays and calls that went against Akron in that game. The one that comes to mind um, is a punt, uh, muff early in the early in the game would have put Akron pretty much you know in the red zone that was overturned by a kind of a phantom holding call so you know stuff didn't really go their way um, they ended up in a weird sort of quarterback situation where they benched Jeff on, under Cuffler brought in Taj Bullock benched him went back to under Cuffler um, and, and you know again a lot of frustration against a very very good Miami of Ohio defense Eastern Michigan is not that um, Eastern Michigan, you know, they, they, Chris Creighton has been very good defensively over the years. And it, even if you go back to the beginning of this season, um, some really, really good defensive efforts for, for Eastern Michigan. Uh, but the wheels have kind of fallen off of late uh, last, you know, last two times out 49, uh, 45 and 49 points allowed in their last two games, both losses. And they just look tired. They, they look like a, you know, a defense that's really sort of, you know, battled all season long and, and is just exhausted and, and is probably going to give up some points in this game. Um, you know, now on the Eastern Michigan side of the ball, 
the offense doesn't get any better. Austin Smith, in my opinion, is the worst starting quarterback that was actually a starter coming into the year in FBS. Um, so you have two teams that really struggle to move the ball, really poor quarterback play. And it's just hard to, to, for me to believe that one of these two teams should be favored by more than, you know, a field goal, giving up multiple key numbers to the other. Um, you know, one thing I will say about Akron is I think like in, in wake of all of sort of what's happened to them this year, a couple really close heartbreaking losses early in the season, DJ irons going down for the year. Um, they've still really kind of battled and, and, you know, bounced back from a couple blowouts, really battling, uh, the fourth quarter against Kent state to come back and win that game in that fashion was great. And they hung in there last week against a, a far superior Miami of Ohio team. So I think the drop in class probably helps both of these teams to get the offenses going. Uh, but I still think Akron is slightly better. And with the three and a half, it, it makes it a, a no, it, it makes it the right side here for me. Um, so Akron plus three and a half, I think they win this game and give my season win total over a very, very small glimmer of hope. Um, but I would take the three and a half. I think it's a very ugly, close game. Ugly. Close game, which I think uh, is fantastic when uh, great description of both Akron and Eastern Michigan football. Uh, but Eastern Michigan over the years with, with him, with Creighton, have been fantastic as a dog, right? Not necessarily right. so yes. much when laying points, right? So you want to you want to back him in the dog role eh, as a yeah. favorite. Not exactly uh, a great situation here with him. Uh, good stuff, though. That, again, tonight, guys, that's a little action during the week. Football here as we are taping on this Tuesday. But don't worry, we're back in the big leagues now. We're talking some uh, some Division One football with Steve Merrill for a best bet. He's going to bring it for you as uh, it looks like we've got, uh, well, it looks like uh, he's a little stiff right now. He's uh, he's trying to work it out there. Uh, he is trying uh, to get back. I, yeah, I don't know. Call me crazy. Uh, Merrill, I don't want you to get too excited. I want you to think about what this is going to be here uh, before, you actually, before you actually lay it out there. I want you to be 100% uh, sure that uh, that you are serious about this best bet between Notre Dame and, uh, and Wake Forest. Now, now that you've had a second to think about it, let's bring him back in and see if he's all right. Nope, still serious. All right, so give him another minute here to think about it. He's thinking it. hard. I'll tell it, I'll t we, it, it, that's a do, challenging yeah. game to think about, Joe. I, I will add to what you had to say. Uh, Eastern Michigan Eastern Michigan is 5-9 and nine ATS their last 14 games as a favorite. So uh, the, okay. it, it doesn't happen often, uh, but when, when mm -hmm. it does, they don't cover. And, and two of those covers were earlier this year, They and they were yes. lucky covers. They were outgained by Kent State. Eastern Michigan. I mean, the number yep. of teams that have outgained by Kent State on their 2023 yes. resume, uh, I think it's them in Central Connecticut State, who is legitimately not an FBS team. Uh, of course, all the teams Jake yep. and I have talked about are, in fact, FBS team. Well, that's good. Now, yeah, uh, listen, Joe, I'm wondering, maybe, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, you know, the pe people want the action picks. Like, these games are tonight. <laughs> no one's trying do. to wait until Saturday right. to fire a bet. A these point. games go in a few hours. So, you know, Absolutely. Me and BP got you covered. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I will no, say no, it's... We appreciate I'm, that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure the thousands of people listening, the thousands mm -hmm. of people listening, that was all news to them, the things that Trig and I said. It was sad, though, that like when Trig was saying that, I was like, yep, I remember that. I was the other person. And you remember that, too. Yes. 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 Know, listen, so, there yes. are we, some edges in these matching yes. uh, games here. I was going to challenge uh, Merrill to a uh, blinking contest, but... <laughs> Something tells me you would have won, Steve. So I avoided that challenge uh, altogether there. So instead, I'm going to ask you now that you've had time to think about uh, your upcoming play here with Notre Dame and Wake Forest. Uh, you were in deep thought. We appreciate that. But have you come to a resolution? Have you figured out which side you're going to go in this Notre Dame Wake Forest game? Yes, and I look forward to watching the replay here to see what that looks like. And I'm going to tell you what, I think I finally taxed the computer after doing seven, I think six or seven college football previews yesterday, four NFL today, a couple of live shows, including the Teddy Covers Roast. By the way, if you didn't see Tuesday's Wager Talk today, check out the Teddy Covers Roast. I still regret 
that when I came to him, I didn't say Mr. Covers, if that's your real name. I, I still regret not using that line. <laughs> but uh, check that out. That was some good TV today on Tuesday. Brian Power made a cameo as well, but still a reason to watch it nonetheless. Let's get to a free play here for this weekend on Saturday in college football. And I actually did do a standalone video for this on Monday, but I wanted to bring it up again because I like it the more I look at it. And that's Notre Dame minus the 24 and a half. You know, I know 24 and a half is an ugly number because you're basically laying 27, 26 and a half because 25, 26 are dead numbers. But I think Notre Dame wins this one by margin, probably by at least 28 or more. And we've seen a similar situation here in recent history. And in fact, I believe a few weeks ago, I used Notre Dame as a free play here on this show when they were playing Pitt coming off the bye week. And I mentioned how the bye came at an excellent time for Notre Dame. And then they had to play Clemson. I like Clemson in that game as a live home dog. The entire world was on Notre Dame a couple of weeks ago. It was probably the most public side I've seen all season in college football. But I like Notre Dame now this week because once again, they're coming off a bye. And I know what you're saying. How could they possibly have two buys in a three week span? Well, that's because. They benefited from playing that August game, week zero against Navy over in Ireland in Kevin Dolan's neck of the woods. And now they get another bye week. And I think it comes at a really good time for them to regroup. I know they have three losses on the season, but the fact they're coming off the bye, I think they'll come refocused here. And they can open up a can of you-know-what against a Wake Forest team that just doesn't have backdoor cover potential. So when they get behind in this game, which they will, they're going to have a difficult time catching up. And Notre Dame has shown the blowout weaker teams. I referenced that Pitt game a few weeks back in which they won 58-7. to And um, this is really the only weak opponent they've played since mid-September. So I look for another blowout win from the Irish, and I think they get it done. If you're going to play it, you better lay it. Lay the 24-and-a-half at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. And don't forget, I mentioned this promo code in some of those videos. Instant, $50 off any 30-day package. Promo code ALL30. It could be football. It could be basketball. It could be all sports. Use promo code ALL30 for an instant $50 discount on any 30-day subscription. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, there you go. It was absolutely worth the wait. We learned a little bit more about some match in football there while uh, Merrill contemplated this Notre Dame Wake Forest pick. And, heck, uh, we got a little something for everyone, but Merrill is uh, correct because it's not just college football. We got college uh, basketball. Again, I'd encourage you guys to go check out uh, Adam Trigger's best bet in college basketball. Uh, you can find that video here, which is another reason why you want to go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and make plans to join us uh, daily here on Wager Talk TV as nobody has more content when it comes to college football, NFL, NHL, college hoops, NBA. We have got you covered all week long, and we'll be back again tomorrow for another edition of the college football kickoff show as we get ready for week 12 plenty more games to break down coming this week in fact if it's game previews you want it's game previews we have go ahead click on that video on your screen right now you'll get access to all the top 25 top 50 big name programs head-to-head -head battles previews plus best bets are just a click away so go ahead click on that video and come back and join us again tomorrow for another edition of the college football kickoff show. Good luck. We'll talk to you again soon.